Uh, the water's perfect. Thanks so much. Somebody in the lobby you want to admit? So they're on the screen. Can you uh, QC times admit? Yeah, I'll I'll I'm just got it. Hey, Willie, will you just keep an eye on the lobby? Thanks. All right. Uh, are you moderating? Yeah. Let me have you closer to Lucas here so we can hear it on the microphone, and I'm going to hit go. You ready? Okay. All right. So, Lucas, you will look at the camera instead of me. You can look right here. You got it. And ready when you are. Okay. Well, we'd like to welcome the winner of the 2021 John Deere Classic, Lucas Glover. Lucas, congratulations on your win. Thank you, Doug. Uh, impressive round today, seven under 64, good enough to get the job done. I know it's been a while. You've been working hard to get back to the winner's circle. With that said, just some thoughts on collecting the title of the John Deere Classic. Yeah, it was great. Uh, they were first start here in 2002. Uh, and. Uh, I just remembered loving it then, and uh, uh, any win's a good win, but uh, you know, this, I think this was my third or fourth tour start, so a bit of a uh, bit of a um, <coughs> um, lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, a lot of flashing on that <laughs> screen, my fault. Um, so, yeah, it means a lot to win here. Um, anywhere's, a, anywhere's a good one, but. Uh, People here do such a great job with the event and um, support our support the tournament, support us so much. Um, I'm happy to be their champion for a year. Obviously, a big week coming up now. Uh, perhaps it hadn't set in yet, but just your mindset, your feeling, your enthusiasm to heading over the pond. Yeah, yeah, excited, um, excited. Hopefully, I got a negative test coming, but uh, we'll see. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was difficult to make plans, but. Uh, once we get there, it's one of the one of the greatest events in, that we have in uh, in our sport. So uh, very excited to uh, get over there and, and compete and uh, get after it. Okay. And just as a reminder to those on the call, if you have questions, please type your name into the chat function, just as Doug Ferguson has done. And by virtue of that, Buggy, you are first up. Go ahead. I would have deferred to Craig Lucas. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. At, um, Really nice at, at, at what point during that surge of late birdies did it kick in that, that you're right there with a the chance to win, and how did your brain react to that? Um, after 14, I uh, I knew it was uh, getting getting crunch time, and wanted to keep pushing. Too many too many birdies, too many great players behind me, and uh, scores were you know just going low. So uh, just tried to push. Wanted to get it to 20, and push, 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 and. Uh, I think that kept me from from getting complacent, kept me from getting too nervy, because because uh, I knew it was going to take a take a bunch take take a bunch more under par. And then, were you did you feel more nerves on the golf course or in the 30 minutes after you finished waiting on the boys to finish? 30 minutes after, 100 percent, not even close. Uh, we're so uh, so reactive out there to uh, to what's going on, and you, and you're. In, in as much control as you can be in as a golfer because you're hitting the shots but uh, when you're sitting there waiting you have zero control and, and uh, as an athlete that's the worst feeling. Thanks. Well, Thanks Doug. Thank you. Okay next we'll go to Craig DeVries PGA Tour.com Craig. Lucas, um, you know, been a while since uh, you've been in the winner's circle. Uh, I suppose back in 11 and 09, we won the Open. It felt like uh, there were going to be a lot more behind it. So, is this delayed gratification? Is that even better? Yeah. So? yeah, I don't know if uh, if delayed. I think anytime you win, it's gratifying. But uh, I'm also not uh, not one to think that, or not. I, I've always been a big believer, and there's nothing guaranteed in this game, and uh, it can. It can be easy one day and be really, really, really hard the next. And, and um, so, yeah, it's been a difficult 10 years, but I uh, never lost my faith, never lost my drive, never lost the self-belief. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. Has it felt like a long time coming? I mean, uh, 
And yeah. did this and did this success? I mean, did you feel this one come a little bit here? I felt some good golf coming. I didn't know how good, um, but um, I think a lot of people, if they're honest, would admit that sometimes it comes from nowhere and uh, comes out of nowhere. But I, uh, I've, I've been playing well and had some good rounds and had some good finishes of late. And uh, um, you know, 63 and a 64 in, in, in a week, uh, um, proved myself right on that, I guess. Any expectations coming into this week? Uh, did you have a have a, a glimmer uh, of what was coming? Yeah, I mean, I show up uh, each week with the intention to uh, play good and play or play well and 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 try my best to win. And uh, when that stops, I'll I'll hang them up and, and that'll be enough. Um, but um, <clears throat> you know, everybody's tied on Thursday morning, and. Um, you know, I'm 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 at every event to try to win, whether I'm feeling good or not. And um, you know, this week uh, things just went my way, and, and I executed when it mattered. One more, if I could. Uh, you talked about the struggles. Um, when did it feel at the slowest step, and, and, and where did you find the, uh, the resolve to, um, to keep going and, and bring it back? Yeah, yeah. No, I went to uh, I went to the Corn Ferry Finals twice. Um, one after an injury and one after playing so bad. Um, luckily, was able to uh, get my card back both times. Um, but um, you know, it's still, it's, it's it was it was bad as far as being on tour. But uh, the grand scheme of things, I still uh, was a pro golfer and um, still had a chance to to get my job back. So um, you know that that was pretty low. But as far as how I kept go how I kept going is just self belief and um, the ability to work hard, trust what you're working on, and believe in yourself. And I've always done that. Okay, I let it go one more. Any, how does this raise expectations for the rest of the year? It doesn't. I've been out here been out here too long to, to to think about that. Every week's a new week. Every swing's a new swing. Every stroke's a new stroke. And um, it's uh, you know. I show up next week at, in uh, in England, and uh, we're all tied on Thursday again. And it doesn't matter what you did the week before, the year before, ten years before. Um, that's a new week. Thank you. Rick. Yes, sir. Okay, next we go to Tom Johnson. Tom, go ahead. Hey, Lucas. Congratulations. Um, we start with something positive here, I guess. Um, ten years is a long time between wins out here. Did you really ever honestly think you would get back at the winner's circle at this stage of your career? 100%. Why? Still think, still thought I was good enough. And uh, still, you know, I'm working harder now and more efficiently than I did in my 20s when I was having the most success. And, um, you know, I, I still play 25, six, seven events a year, and I still can't honestly say I can, I can I can do it, and um, I never doubted that. What uh, going to today? Today's round. Um, number, you had a, a good, a clean card on the front side. What happened at eleven with the bogey? And did you think that that derailed you, or how did that affect the round and then kick you into that strong finish? Yeah, eleven was a bit sloppy. Obviously, uh, middle of the fairway with a pretty straightforward shot and I pulled it a little bit and uh, medium difficulty up and down. I just hit a pretty average chip and then a poor putt. Um, but walking to 12, um, I knew there were tons of birdie holes coming up and um, I was still hitting it nice just because I hit one bad one on 11. Didn't mean I was all of a sudden couldn't hit any more good ones. So it was just kind of a refocus moment and then um, you know, started, you know, started hitting good shots again. Were you watching the leaderboard all day? Not all day. A little bit early, and then um, after thirteen, after fourteen, kind of took a study, and then um, just tried to get, tried to tell myself that uh, we need to get this thing to twenty. Keep the pedal down. Get this thing to twenty under. Guys are going to be making birdies. A lot of good players behind you. Just let's go. And uh, I think that mindset kept me from getting complacent. Kept me from getting too. Too nervy, too watchy on the scoreboards, if you will. I just I wanted to keep the pedal down, make as many birdies as I could. 
Okay, you didn't get to 20. Did you think that was going to be problematic or not? Uh, well, when I walked off 18, I think I was up three at the time. So uh, um, I think I was I was pretty happy if, uh, if if I didn't get to 20 and that held up. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Good job. Thanks. Okay, next we've got Adam Shupak. Adam, go ahead. Congrats, Lucas. Uh, Thanks. You know, we've talked we've talked many times about your putting woes. You tried everything. What what did you find this week? Um, comfort, I guess. Um, and uh, managed to stay calm out there, and uh, you know, made made a bunch of made a bunch of good ones, and made the short ones when it mattered. And uh, yeah, it was good. Just got a good routine and uh, good. Um, yeah, just have a good routine now, and uh, it was good to fall back on it. Did you draw any inspiration from seeing the likes of Stuart Sink and Brian Gay, other 40-somethings, even you know Phil at 50, winning winning tournaments this season? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, and you know those those guys, Brian and and Stuart and Phil, to an extent, are, are all friends, and it was great to see them win when uh, you know a lot of people had counted them out, and you know always oh, old is over the hill, blah blah blah, young guys tour, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it was uh, it was inspiring because and 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 great because they're they're friends of mine, but it was also like all right, maybe uh, maybe it's not too out of the norm, out of the out of the realm of possibility. Okay. There were some guys who hadn't won before who were playing well, but you know the, the pressure maybe got to them. How do you think experience helped you today? Um, I, th I think a lot. I think anytime, um, anytime you've won, anytime you've been there, anytime you have anything to fall back on, it's an advantage. Um, there were a lot of guys that had won, some guys that hadn't, like you said. But um, yeah, I think uh, just just pushing for that number was was big for me because I didn't, I never had a chance to get. Uh, Get complacent, get uh, settled for where I was. Okay. You mentioned on the broadcast that uh, this is the first time your kids have seen you win. Were they were they kind of wanting to see that? Were they giving you a hard time that they hadn't seen you win? No, no, not at all. They just you know they they're at the age now where they ask me you know how I'm doing and what place are you tied for stuff like that. And then um, no, I just thought it was I thought uh, thought it was really cool that they got to see it. If you could call up Dick Harmon today, what would you tell him? Um, we did it again. <laughs> Thanks. And just last, last yep. thing, what's the logo on your hat there? IH Services. It's uh, my family's business. My grandfather started it in 1955 and uh, still family owned. Uh, industrial housekeeping is what the IH stands for. Uh, it's a uh, cleaning company. Thanks very much, congrats. Yep, thank you. Okay, we'll go back to Doug Ferguson. Bergie, go ahead. A couple more, Lucius. I hope you don't mind. Yes, the, sir. Um, I'm really curious about the routine on the putting. Who, who uh, how did you come about that? Because it makes you sound like it's pretty important. Yeah, yeah. I um, started working with a gentleman named Ward Jarvis, um, who works with several other guys out here. And um, started with him right around Puerto Rico this year. And we developed a uh, couple of things that I do every time, no matter what. And then um, uh, last week, or two weeks ago at home, I uh, started taking a practice stroke behind the ball instead of beside it, because it uh, helped me with my setup, um, getting, more, getting more consistently set up instead of practice stroke behind and then moving in. I seem to aim a little uh, trended to the right when I would do that, for whatever reason. So I started taking a practice stroke right down my line, right behind the ball, and then just walking in and going. Okay. Um, two more things. You mentioned on, on the telecast that it, it feels good to prove people wrong, and it feels good to prove yourself right. Which one feels better? Uh, always yourself. Always yourself. Because, uh, you know, every morning and every night, you got to answer to yourself, no matter what. No matter what anybody else says, good or bad, it's still you, yourself, and your inner peace, and uh, what you're telling yourself, what you believe every day. And, and lastly, as a, I want to look ahead for just a second, since you were a 36 hole joint leader, if I'm not mistaken, at St. George's last time, correct? Yes. What do you, um, what do you look forward to about that course? And, um, and, and do you think it's, 
accurate enough to say that, that you can expect anything there given the way the ball bounces? Agreed on the last part, 100%. Um, it's one of those you uh, you just, you know, you expect uh, expect to have the unexpected and uh, and go with it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back. Uh, hadn't been there since since uh, since Clarkie's win, so uh, looking forward to it. And uh, always nice to show up somewhere on a high note. So uh, uh, yeah, looking forward to to getting there. Assuming they let us in. So. All right. Very good. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks Doug. Okay. Looks like Don Doxy. Don, are you on the line with a question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lucas. Uh, I you obviously handled the weather conditions as well as anybody today. Um, I know when you went to U.S. Open in 09, you also you had fought a lot of rain that day. Did, did you have any flashbacks to that or anything? Uh, no flashbacks, but uh, I do always have in the back of my mind that I'm a pretty good mutter, uh, if I can call myself that. But uh, I was just saying to some guys out front that uh, the key to a day like today is having a good relationship with your caddy and an understanding. And um, my guy and I have been together 18 years, and he knows when I'm going to hand him the umbrella, and I know when he's going to hand it back to me. And it's almost second nature. We've been through plenty of rainstorms and uh, and all that stuff. Yeah, you're anticipating my next question. I was going to ask you if who did anything in particular to really help you today, especially down the stretch there. Um. He's just even keel as always. Um, he's uh, he's just level, good or bad. He's level, and that's that's what you want. You don't want a, somebody out there that gets up and down. You want somebody that's level, good, good, bad, or ugly. And uh, no, he did a great job keeping the clubs dry, keeping me dry, and uh, you know just just being himself. We had some laughs out there like always, and then when it was when it was go time, he was ready with the number, and uh, and uh, it was it was time. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to Craig DeVries, and then we'll close with Doug Ferguson with one more, and Tom Johnson with one more. Lucas, um, as you worked your way back and through the below, we'll call it that, did, uh, did having a U.S. Open on your resume, uh, did that give you confidence, or did at some point it seem like, why can't I play up to this? Was there, was there an albatross? Um, yeah, no, no albatross. Um, yeah, I mean, that's one of those things that can't ever take from me. So it was, uh, yeah, it's always nice to reflect back on that and, and say, you know, I, I did it at the highest level, did it, executed at the highest level, and uh, it's still in there. It doesn't go anywhere. You just got to find it. And, um, you know, like I've said numerous times uh, this evening, I've never, never once lost faith, never once, uh, um, quit believing in myself and fortunately understand that this game's hard and uh, uh, there's going to be struggles. Nobody's ever come through uh, a long career on tour and not uh, not had a difficult time at some point, uh, whether it's 10 years or, or 10 weeks, but it happens. And uh, that uh, that's where the perspective came from is and the self-belief. It was just, you know, I, I know it's in there. I just got to got to find it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, we go to Doug Ferguson for one more, and then we'll close with Tom Johnson. Shorty, Lucas, uh, just the, the British got me to think of what, what kind of uh, arrangements do you have? Where are you staying? Who's in your little buddy group? And um, where are you going to send to the grocery store? That kind of stuff. Uh, don't know the answer to the last one, but uh, unfortunately, Coop can't go. He had some passport issues, and with. Uh, COVID and the immigration office, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he wasn't able, there's actually quite a few, or not quite a few, but a few guys that had the same issue. Um, so it's just me and uh, the guy I'm taking, uh, Michael Sims, uh, who's gonna caddy for me. We're gonna stay together and uh, that'll be that. And I think um, we're having, luckily having uh, food dropped off every evening from what I understand. Um, I wasn't in charge of that side of it, but uh, That'll, uh, that's what I've been told. We'll see. Sure will be the best food you've ever had. Absolutely. Right. Anyway, get back. Thanks, Doug. You're not going? <laughs> I, I am not. I had my own passport issues. I'm just kidding. Okay, and we'll finish up with Tom Johnson. Tom, bring it home. Hey, Lucas, you had 
high praise for this area. It sounds like you're really comfortable coming back here. Does that affect your goal, the performance on the course when you're in an area you like? Um, I don't think it can hurt. I don't think, uh, I don't think it, unfortunately, I don't necessarily think it can propel you to make a 50 foot putt or something like that. But, um, but just arriving here and being here, it, there's a sense of comfort. And uh, I've always liked it here. I've always liked the people. They always are so gracious and treat us so well and the volunteers and tournament staff. I mean, just everybody, the whole town, the whole Quad Cities is just so supportive of this event and so happy we're here and so involved that it's, it's just comforting, you know, and uh, they're pulling for you no matter if you're in the first group or the last group. And it's, it's just cool. They do a great job here. The event supporting it, it's, it's just, it's an awesome event. Is it a unique feeling on tour yeah. when you come here? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I said this earlier, and, and I, I hope I voiced it correctly, but um, every, virtually everywhere else we go, there's always something else going on or something else at the same time, whether it be another sport or a concert or a something. But, I mean, this week in this area, man, this is the classic. And that's what they call it. And you're going. And... I mean, you look at what we had out there today, I mean, it was rotten today. And we still had people crawling over this place supporting us. And it was great. All right, thanks, man. Thank you. All right, well, Lucas, that's all we got for you. I'd like to wish you congratulations. Thank you, Doug. Again. Best of luck this week. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to get, uh, we'll be telling audio. Yeah, we'll stand by. Just